Well, hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. We are going through Deuteronomy right now. I don't know if we're halfway. Um, we're about, we're in chapter 12, and uh, so we got a ways to go. I, I, I will say this over and over again um, as, as we introduce um, these uh, teachings. Deuteronomy is a sermon or a series of sermons given by Moses, but just before the people went into the promised land, okay? And these are not the same people that came out of Egypt. These are the children of the people that came out of Egypt. So this is, uh, you know, this teaching should have been taught to them by their parents, uh, but it might not have been, okay? So this is new, and it might be a refresher, but it's something they, stuff they needed to know uh, before they went into the promised land. Um, today, I want to talk about... Um, uh, it's called destroy completely. Uh, you'll you'll see when we get into here what I'm talking about when it's, it says destroy completely, and this is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 12, uh, verses one through three. We're gonna we're looking at chapter 12 for the next four episodes here, um, and it's just it you know there's so much good information uh, here in Deuteronomy, and so we're gonna look at the first three verses of chapter three here today. Um, all right, and so it says this. This is chapter 12 of Deuteronomy 1 through 3. These are the decrees and laws you must be careful to follow in the land that the Lord your God, that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you to possess. Okay, as long as you live in the land. Okay, so these are the rules and laws you need to obey uh, while you're in here. And it's not a surprise. It was given to your ancestors. Okay, verse 2. Destroy completely. Uh, all right, and let me reread that that those two words again. Destroy completely all the places on the high mountains, on the hills, and under every spreading tree, where the nations you are disposing worship their gods. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, and burn their Asherah poles in their fire. Cut down their idols of the gods and wipe out the names of those from those places okay um, but that's it uh, three verses there but those three verses explain everything really well um, when it in those two 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 words there destroy completely uh, that when the people of Israel went into that promised land there should have been nothing left of foreign gods in there okay no little cutesy idols no um, little uh, shrines or places to worship those things, they should have all been completely destroyed, okay? And what happened is they decided, oh, let's not completely destroy them. Let's destroy most of it or a good portion of it, but let's not destroy all of it. You know, there's some good gold in there and this cute little statue and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. Well, when they didn't destroy everything, the little bit that they kept... Uh, turned out to be a big hindrance to them okay and um and so god god had a reason right why he said destroy completely everything but uh they didn't do it now you're thinking to, to yourself what's this got to do with me well this the same thing we have accepted jesus into our heart we as christians you know if you are a christian then you've accepted jesus into your heart now my God and your God is a jealous God. He doesn't, uh, uh, you know, is not sharing Godship with anyone else. Okay. So just like my wife doesn't share her husband with anybody else. Okay. It's, it's um, she's not married to several guys. She's married to one guy and I'm married to one woman. All right. And it's, it, that's just the way it is. Um, we don't have multiple wives and so forth uh, because God has ordained that we'd be married to one man and one woman. All right. So that it, it, it's really a picture of what God desires of us. He wants only himself to be worshipped, not him, one of many gods, only him uh, to be worshipped. So all those other remnants of other false gods are to be destroyed. You know, nothing left. So, uh, I, so I shouldn't have, if I... Um, uh, in, married to my wife, which I am, I shouldn't have pictures of, uh, you know, another uh, woman 
uh, you know, that, not that I want to date or something like that. I shouldn't have those pictures hanging around and, um, you know, the, uh, a woman's different woman's clothes or anything like that. Nothing should be of another woman should be there. It's just the stuff from, from my wife. And so that, and how would my wife feel if, you know, she came home and was like, Oh, what's this stuff? You know, these pictures of this other woman and uh, the clothes of this other woman. Like, what kind of goofiness is that? And we think that's goofy today, you know, if you did that. But that's the way our God feels is like, if you bring that stuff in, uh, you know, he's a jealous God and he is serious when he says, you worship me only, not uh, all these other things. And then where we get into problems is when we allow those other things in, um, Besides God, um, that's where, where the problems come. And so we need to destroy everything. When you have other gods, and, and it's anything that comes between you and the Lord becomes an idol. All right. So it could be my, if I'm playing basketball and I, that's my my life is to play basketball, that, that could be an idol between me and God. And you could, you could argue, oh yeah, I can have this idol of basketball and I can have God and uh, everything will work out great. No. God says, you know, uh, you need to, I need to be the, the primary and only God, uh, not God in basketball or God in my car or God in my job. None of that stuff. It's only the, our worship of God. Okay. And everything else should be destroyed, which means it's, it's not part of your life. Okay. If, if I've destroyed those things, they're no longer a part of my life. So um, anyway, hopefully that makes sense. And, but the point I'm trying to make here, too, is he says destroy completely. Nothing, there should be nothing. No little remnants, no little cutesy little things left. Everything needs to, to go. And we only worship one God. And that's, uh, you know, through Jesus Christ. All right. So uh, hopefully that explains everything. If it doesn't, well, we've got some work to do. All right. Uh, let me pray with you. Lord God, I thank you for this time. We can be together. I pray that we would, uh, we would understand and we would fully serve you. Getting rid of all the other gods that are in our lives, um, things that come before you, and that we would focus and worship you alone. We thank you and praise you for who you are and how you work in our lives, dear Jesus. In your name, amen. I want to thank you for watching. I am a regular dude walking in the Word, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through Deuteronomy. Lord's blessing, I'll see you then.